the Jack Benny program, presented by Lucky Strike. Do you do da do da do da do you do da do da? Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, tear and compare. See for yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a lucky strike. Then compare. Some cigarettes are too loosely packed. Some even fall apart. But look at that lucky. See how it stays together. A perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco. So round and firm and fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Now, what does this mean to you as a smoker? It means your Lucky is free of excessive air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry, and those annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. And because your Lucky has long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco, it burns evenly, smokes smooth and mild. Yes, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Iris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Logan. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Rochester working as usual. Mm -mm, I sure have a lot to do. Every day is the same thing. Work, work, work. <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. I wouldn't mind, but I never seem to get finished. Got to do the dishes, though it's much against my wishes. You're a slow paw. <laughs> Got to do the shopping, Mr. Benny keeps me hopping. You're a slow paw. <laughs> There's a parrot here who constantly picks on me. He's gonna wind up in a frigazine. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, what are you doing to Polly? Uh, nothing, boss. Oh. Oh, Rochester, uh, bring me a screwdriver, will you, please? Yes, sir. Here you are, boss. Thank you. I just have to tighten this last screw, and I'll have the phonograph all fixed. But, boss, this phonograph has been broken for months. Why are you so anxious to fix it? Because Dennis Day sent over a record that he made especially for me to hear. See, I... I can't understand what's wrong with this phonograph. I tried to fix it once before. Well, boss, maybe if I took this and I... Oh, Rochester, now look what you've done. You knocked the horn off. <laughs> <laughs> and you tipped over the dog, too. <laughs> Watch it, will you, kid? Uh, I'm sorry, boss. Let's take another look at the motor and see what's wrong. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Here's a loose wire. I see where it's supposed to go. I'll just take it and put it in. Let... Pull out the plug! Pull out the plug! <laughs> Boy, what a shock I got. Yeah, I'll bet my hair is standing on end. Should I go in your bedroom and see? <laughs> Don't be funny. There, the wire's fixed. Put in the plug and we'll play some other record before we put on Dennis's. What have we got in the album? Let's see. I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, Dardanella, The Sheik of Araby, Keep the Home Fires Burning, Cook a Katie, and After the Ball is Over. No, I don't want to spoil those. Play some of the older ones. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Well, it's any record older than these are on cylinders. Oh, well, put some of these on. I want to try it out. Yes, sir. Uh, shall I put in a new needle? Oh, no, Rochester. See, the needle we have uh, was guaranteed to play a thousand records, and we only used it 873 times. <laughs> What on memory? Memory nothing. Count the notches on the side of the phonograph. <laughs> now let's turn it on. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You told me you're going to take me to the boss baseball game, and I came over, and you're not even ready. Well, I'll be ready in a minute. Well, why are you fooling around with that phonograph? Because Dennis sent me a record of the song he's going to sing on the program. I want to hear it, and this darn thing is broken again. Oh, Jack, why don't you get rid of that old piece of junk and buy a new one? Oh, Mary, this phonograph isn't so old. Go on, Edison's fingerprints are still on it. <laughs> what? And she means Edison the boy. <laughs> oh, stop. Now, look, Mary, if I want antiques in my house, that's my business. You and your antiques. You ought to have your whole house done over. Done over? Yes. Did you watch television yesterday and see what they've done to the White House? How beautiful they've made it? Yeah, I saw it. See, I thought that tour through the White House was very interesting. But there was one thing I couldn't get over. What was that? Well, there's a doctor's office right in the White House. And 24 hours a day, a doctor and his staff are always on duty. Well, that's right, Jack. President Truman has his own personal doctor. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Wouldn't it be cheaper if he belonged to the Blue Cross? <laughs> you would think of that. What? I thought it was wonderful the way the entire nation was invited to the White House. And President Truman even played the piano. Uh, what did he play, Miss Livingston? When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back. He did not! <laughs> Did he? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Say, boss, I think I fixed the phonograph. Good, good. Well, come on, Jack. If we're going to the ball game, let's get started. In a minute, I want to hear Dennis's record. Rochester, put Dennis's record on. Yes, sir. Uh, what song is it, Jack? Well, Dennis made a special recording for me to hear. It's Irving Berlin's new song called For the Very First Time. Play it, Rochester. <laughs>
Say, Mary, that, that new Irving Berlin song was very good, and I never heard Dennis in better voice. Well, I thought he was swell. I thought I was wonderful. <laughs> Dennis, when did you get here? While well, my record was on. Well, why didn't you say something? When Dennis says things, nobody interrupts, Junior. <laughs> Dennis, I was... Just a second. Everybody wants to get into the act. How do you like that? Dennis. It's a catastrophe. Now me. cut that out! <laughs> and take off that putty nose. <laughs> now, Dennis, why did you send me a record if you were coming over here anyway? I, do I, I thought I, w I wouldn't be able to come. <laughs> I got Durante on for nothing. <laughs> you see, I was supposed to go to Nevada on some secret government work. You? That's why you didn't come here? I mean, you were going to Nevada for secret government work. What were you supposed to do? Just stand still. <laughs> why? They were going to drop a bomb on me. <laughs> then. Dennis, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Oh, you're just mad because they didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm mad. Jack, let's go or we'll be late for the ball game. All right, come on. Oh, gosh, it's hot out today. It certainly is. I'll say. This morning, my uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk. What? Dennis, you mean your uncle... Mary, Mary, let it alone. <laughs> uh, but, Jack, he said... I know what he said. He said his uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk. I'll Yesterday he fried an egg on the sidewalk, too. Really? Mary, I'm warning you. <laughs> the day before that, my uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk, too. Well, it's been hot all week. Yeah, yeah, so he fried eggs on the sidewalk. My uncle hopes it rains tomorrow. Why? For a change, he'd like poached eggs. <laughs> Mary, you, I told, I asked, you... I didn't ask Look, you. I asked him. Look, Dennis, Mary and I are going to the ball game. Do you want to go with us or not? I'd like to, but I can't. Good, good. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go to the game. <laughs> playing today? Los Angeles and Seattle. Let's see, we have seats one and two, aisle 15. Where's aisle 15? I don't know. Why don't you ask the usher? No, nah, I can't. I can find it. Come on. Hot dogs, hot dogs, get your red hot chair. Mary, here's aisle 15, but I don't see our seats. Jack, why don't you ask an usher? I'm not going to ask anybody. I always get into arguments with ushers. Besides, I... Wait a minute, there are, there are our seats. See, it looks like somebody's sitting in them. You wait here. I'll go and ask him to leave. Okay. E excuse me, mister, but I think you're sitting in my... Hi, Rube. <laughs> huh? Oh. Oh, nice seeing you again. Huh? Same here. Shake. Sure. Uh, 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 don't squeeze too hard. That's my milking hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you come all the way from Calabasas just to see the ball game? No, I had to come in on business from a farm. Business? Yeah, came in to buy a new incubator to hatch our chicks. Incubator, huh? Yeah, I don't go for them newfangled things myself, but my wife insisted we get one. She did? Yeah, she said she was tired of taking the eggs to bed with us. <laughs> oh. Uh, personally, I like it. You wake up in the morning feeling like a mother. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know about that. Now, look, uh, there seems to be some mix-up here. I think you're sitting in my seat. No, well, I'm in the right seat. But look at my ticket stub. Uh, yeah. let, let's see. Mm, seats one and two, aisle 15. Wait a minute. This is the left aisle 15. You want the right aisle. Oh, yes, yes, my mistake. Well, I better be getting along. The game will be just hey, Just about... a minute. I'd like to have you meet my wife. Your wife? Yeah. Honey, this is Jack Benny. Well, how do you do? Hello, handsome. <laughs> I'm very happy to meet you. <laughs> well, 
this, uh, this is your wife? Yep. Ain't as much of a hick as you thought I was. <laughs> I'll say you're not. Well, goodbye. So long, Rube. Uh, Jack, what happened? They weren't our seat. This is the left side of the park. Ours on the right side. Come on, let's hurry. The Seattle team is coming out on the field. Put on your glasses. That's Don Wilson. <laughs> Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack, Mary. Hello, Don. <laughs> Do you come to the games often? Oh, uh, Mary, I haven't missed a game this season. I love baseball. He sure does, Mary. You know, Don used to play with Denver. That's before he went into radio. That's right, Mary. I played baseball for three years. What position? I covered center field. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> Don. <laughs> hey, Don. Tell Mary about the time you won the game when you slid into home plate. <laughs> oh, Jack, I'd rather not. I'm embarrassed. I don't blame you. <laughs> Tell me, did they ever find that catcher? <laughs> what a mess that was. <laughs> you know, I'll never forget... Hey, I think the game is going to start pretty soon. Uh, uh, Jack, what are they booing about? Oh, the umpires are coming out on the field. People always do that. Yeah. Hey, look, down. those umpires are walking over to the field, Mike. Maybe they got an important announcement to make. Let's listen. Nobody seems to care Our hearts may be breaking From insults we're taking But nobody seems to care Nobody loves an umpire We get an icy stare You greet our decisions With jeers and derision And nobody seems to care We may be homely But that's not the reason we're lonely Although you may doubt us, you can't play without us, so why don't you treat us fair? When you are sitting up in the stands, puffing a lucky and feeling grand, consider the men who get all the lumps. Are we chumps to be humped? The jeers and the boos never bother me, cause I know how happy I'm gonna be. For soon he'll be home in his easy chair, enjoying a lucky sky. Everyone loves a lucky, and luckies will please your friends. So get on the ball and let's see that you all get the smoke that has no loose ends. Everyone loves a lucky, there's no better smoke, that's true. Just care and compare and we know you'll declare that it's time to try. A lucky the smoke you will like. Hey, say, Don, <laughs> Don, you put those umpires up to that, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did, Jack. <laughs> you know, Don, you're fat but cute. Really. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you later. Okay. Oh, by the way, Don, would you happen to know where right aisle 15 is? Oh, I don't, Jack. Why don't you ask an usher? Never mind. We'll find it ourselves. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Okay. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, the batteries for today's game. For Seattle, Kinsfather and Shams. For Los Angeles, Chandler and Lade. You know, Mary, this would really be a great game. Today. Hot dogs, here you are. Get your red hot tea. Say, Jack, before we sit down, how about getting some hot dogs? Well. Aw, oh, come on, Jack. You only live once. <laughs> Gee, I, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, all right. Say, fellow. Yeah. How much are your hot dogs? Twenty-five cents each. Hmm. Twenty-five cents. How come they're so high? Well, it's this way. Recently, the price of steel went up, so when a farmer's buy a plow to raise corn, he has to pay more money for the plow. Then the cattle and hog breeders have to pay more money for the corn, which they use for feed. Then the meat packing houses have to pay more money for the meat. And this price raise is ultimately passed on to the consumer. The same thing holds true for the flour they use to make the rolls. So since the price of the rolls and the meat have both gone up, the price of hot dogs is 25 cents. <laughs> I was
was prepared for you this year, Mr. Benny. <laughs> look, last year you drove me nuts with your dickering. Look, fella. Hey, look. don't you never buy nothing without getting sealed bids? <laughs> never mind that. Just give me two hot dogs. Okay. What do you want on them? Yeah, I don't know. What have you got on those? Everything. I just dropped them. <laughs> <laughs> well, then give me two fresh ones Okay, here you are Thanks that, That'll be 50 cents Hmm, let me see Have you got change for a $20 bill? Yeah, I'm prepared for that one, too <laughs> Never mind, just give me my change Yeah, here you are Hot dogs, hot dogs, get your red hot chair Come on, Mary, let's find our seat Attention, please, there has been a change in the batteries for Seattle Nagy will pitch instead of Kinsfather just a minute, Mary. I think this is the aisle we want. No, we're 15, and this is 24. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Why don't you Well, act... hiya, Libby. Oh, hello, Phil. Take me old man to the ball game, eh? <laughs> hiya, Rube. <laughs> hey, Libby, ain't you a little early for Father's Day? <laughs> Phil, you can stop with those cracks about my age already. You're not exactly a Boy Scout yourself. Well, look, Jackson, at least I don't lie about my age. I say I'm 36, I'm 36. <laughs> a likely story. Well, if you don't believe me, look at my union card. It says I'm 36. Phil, I wouldn't believe your union card. Why not? It also says you're a musician. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's find our seat. Uh, would you like to sit with us, Phil? No, Livy, I can't. See, I'm here with some of my boys. I got Kimmick, Gremley, and Bagby. Oh. Hey, Jackson. What? Ain't that a shame about Sammy, my drummer? Yeah. When will he be out? <laughs> out? You mean he's in again? Yeah, yeah, Livy, but it wasn't his fault this time. He just happened to step into a clothing store to buy a new suit. Uh-huh. Sammy tried on a snappy gray number and liked the way it fit him. The trouble started when he stepped outside to see how the suit looked in the sunlight. <laughs> Why should that start trouble? Well, it was cloudy here, so he took the suit to Palm Springs. <laughs> you see, Mary, it wasn't Sammy's fault. <laughs> yeah, it could happen to anybody. Anyway, Jackson, we'll have to do without him for a while. Well, frankly, Phil, I can't Ladies say... Ladies that... and gentlemen, the first game of today's doubleheader will be nine innings. The second game will be seven innings. Come on, Jack. We better find our seat. The game's about to begin. Okay. See you later, Phil. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. How about a small bet on the game? A bet? Yeah, I'll take Seattle for $100. $100? Phil, that's too much to bet on anything. You wouldn't really bet that much, would you? Sure I would. Why, once five years ago, I bet $1,000 that Alice had more money than Bing Crosby. Gosh, did you win? I don't know. They're both still counting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, never mind the bet, Phil. See you later. So long, Phil. So long, kid. Come on, Mary. Wait a minute. Here's our aisle. No, that's 35 we must be going in the wrong direction. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. If you're not going to ask an usher, I am. Look, Mary, they always have some smart aleck guys here who always... I don't care. I'm going to ask them anyway. Oh, usher. Yes, miss? Uh, here are our subs. Can you tell us where our seats are? I'm awfully sorry, miss. This is my first day here, and I don't really know my way around yet. <laughs> oh. But that's the head usher right over there. I'm sure he can help you. Gee, I guess they must have changed all the ushers since last year. They're so much nicer now. I'll go over and ask the head usher. Uh, pardon me, are you the head usher? Ooh, Emma! I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. Jack, don't be a coward. Ask him. Okay. Look, usher, can you tell me where my seat is? Right behind you, isn't everybody? <laughs> that does it. Come on, Mary. I don't want to get into any more trouble with Usher. Well, Jack, it's your own fault. Maybe you antagonize him. I do not. You do, too. You keep out of it. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Mary, here are two empty seats right here. Let's sit down. The first batter for Seattle is Pavlik. 
Uh, say, Jack. Quiet, Mary. Here comes the first pitch. Right. Boy, he really grooved that one in. You know, Mary, in this league, he's one of the best. Jack, why is the catcher holding the ball? Why doesn't he throw it back? I don't know. Everybody seems to be looking out. Ladies and gentlemen, time is called momentarily. There's a man frying eggs on third base. <laughs> How do you like that? That must be Dennis's uncle. Yeah. Play ball. Gee, that pitcher's got a great wind-up. Oh, Where did it go? Where did it go? Jack, look out! Look out! Here it comes! Where? Where? Ooh! Usher, Usher, get some water, please. You get the water. I'll stay here and slap his face. <laughs> Jack, Jack, get up, Jack. I'll take you home. Oh. Oh, mister, would, would you help me carry him out, please? Well, sure, lady, I'll help you. Oh, carry me past the box office. I want to get my money back. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Red Cross has moved quickly to meet pressing human needs resulting from Missouri and Mississippi floods. Funds from the annual Red Cross campaign will be insufficient for the current disaster needs, so please help the flood victims by sending your contribution to your local Red Cross chapter. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Do you do da do da do da do you do da do da be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, you can tear and compare and see with your own eyes how Lucky's are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a Lucky Strike. Then compare. You'll see some cigarettes have too many broken shreds and small bits of tobacco giving you those annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. But you won't find that in a Lucky. Just look at that perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Notice those long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco that smoke smooth and even, that give you a milder, better-tasting cigarette. Yes, friends, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton Lucky Strike. Do you do da do da de, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Boss, boss, where are you? I'm in the den, Rochester, listening to the ball game on the radio. I didn't get to see it. Oh, well, I thought maybe... Quiet, quiet. Baker is up to bat. The pitcher winds up. Delivers. It's a long, long fly going towards left field. Looks like a home run. Yes, it's going over the fence. It's still going, going, going. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jack Leonard Program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network.